Hello everyone, Nicole Stackline, technical agronomist for DeKalb and Asgrow in Northeast Iowa. We've got a lot to get over today, so we're gonna get right into it. So today I wanna focus on nitrogen. We are getting into side dress season. We've had a super wet spring. And so the question now is becoming, how much nitrogen have I lost? And do I need to increase my side dress application or do a side dress application to make up for the nitrogen loss? And like most answers that I get to give, it depends. So we've got three main ways that we're gonna lose nitrogen. The first one up here is volatilization. So this is when you make a surface application of a urea based um, nitrogen source. So whether you're dry broadcasting um, urea or the urea component of UAN. So liquid nitrogen is urea ammonium nitrate and about 50% of the nitrogen in your liquid applications is in that urea form. So when we make surface applications of a urea nitrogen, um, that urea is going to react with the urease enzyme in the soil and it can cause it to volatize. If we get a half an inch of rain or more on that application, or if we incorporate it, we don't really have to worry about this. So I'm not really concerned about losing nitrogen in this form this year. Obviously, we've had plenty of moisture. Now, second way is leaching. So leaching happens when you get nitrate, so NO3. We're losing nitrogen in the nitrate form because our soil has a negative charge and nitrate has a net negative charge. So the nitrogen, the nitrate is not sticking to the soil. As we get water flushing through our soil profile, we can be losing this nitrogen to leaching. Last way we're gonna lose nitrogen is from denitrification. So denitrification is a process that again happens to nitrate NO3 when we have saturated and anaerobic soil conditions. So that anaerobic condition starts about two days, day and a half to two days after we've had saturated soils and we finally have all the oxygen out of the soil and we have true anaerobic conditions. And then those microbes, instead of using oxygen, they're gonna use nitrate um, in their cells, in those microbes, and that's going to cause it to go up in the air as well. Again, that's only happening to nitrate. So now it comes the question, how do we know or how can we guesstimate how much of this nitrogen is gone? So Iowa State did a really nice three-part series on exactly this. And I kind of want to walk you guys through some of the calculations or ways that we can estimate nitrogen loss. So making these estimates is all about time and form. Specifically, what form did you put on and how long ago did that happen? Because again, we're trying to figure out how much nitrate we have lost because the ammonium and the urea is sitting there. So we have to be able to estimate whatever form we put on, how long does it take it to become nitrate? And then since it became nitrate, what has been our rainfall? What has been our temperature since that has happened? So here is a chart that's showing us the different forms of nitrogen and how long it takes it to become nitrate. So if you're applying your nitrogen, any nitrogen applied as ammonium as far as AMS or your DAP or your MAP applications, right? Those are in the ammonium form and it's gonna take that ammonium about one to two weeks to turn into nitrate. As we're applying anhydrous ammonia, as soon as we get that ammonia or NH3 into the soil, it's immediately ammonium. And then from that point, we have three to eight weeks for all of that to be converted into nitrate. If we're applying urea, it takes about two to four days to get that from urea to ammonium. And then from then on, it takes about 10 days to two and a half weeks for that to be nitrate. Now, if we're applying UAN or urea ammonium nitrate, about 50% of that is urea. So that 50% of that UAN is gonna take two to four days to be ammonium, and then that 10, to 10 days to two and a half weeks to be nitrate. 25% of that is in the ammonium form. So it's gonna take about one to two weeks for 25% of it to become nitrate. 
and then that last 25% of that UAN is already in the nitrate form. When it comes to denitrification, right, that is a biological process. So the warmer we are, the faster it's going to happen. So if we look here, we can look at the denitrification um, and the rate based off of the temperature. So if we're looking at 55 to 65 degrees um, per day, we're gonna lose about two to 3% of that nitrogen as we're saturated. If we are warmer than 65 degrees, that increases to about a four to five percent loss per day. Now, the caveat that we need to also think about here is that it's not four to five percent at 65 degrees per day that we're saturated. That's four to five percent loss per day at greater than 65 temperature in an anaerobic situation. And remember, it takes about a day and a half to two days of being saturated to get all of the oxygen out of the soil and create that anaerobic condition where this process starts to happen. Let's run through a pretty common example of spring anhydrous ammonia application. So in this example, we're gonna assume a 200 unit spring ammonia application made in early April. So going off of our time it takes to convert that to nitrate, we can safely assume that we've had about 50% of that 200 units convert to nitrate. So we're looking at about 100 units of nitrate in our soil. And let's say you've been getting deluges of rain and you've had your soil saturated for about seven days. If we've got saturated soils for about seven days and it takes about two days to get anaerobic conditions, we've got five days where we've got denitrification happening. So we've got warm temperatures, 65 degrees, we get four to 5% per day loss to denitrification. So if we've got 100 units per day, we're losing four to five units. That four to five units lost over that five day period is a loss of about 20 to 25 units. Let's go through another pretty common example. So someone who is applying a broadcast application of UAN with his sprayer ahead of the planter. So if we're applying 160 units of UAN on April 15th, what we really want to figure out first is how much of my nitrogen is in the nitrate form and at what time. So we're going to use kind of May 1st as our, as our first really important date because most of our big rains were happening in May. So after our application by May 1st, how many units of nitrate did we have? So remember, 25% of this 160 units is already in the nitrate form. So we got 40 units there. 50% of this 160 units is in the urea form. If we take the average time it takes to convert it to ammonium, and then the average time it takes to convert it to um, nitrate, we're just going to go with an average of 40 or about 50% of that urea being converted to nitrate. And then we've got another 25% of that UAN is in the ammonium form, and it takes it about two weeks to convert that into nitrate. So out of all of those, we've got a total of about 120 units of nitrate. So if we use that same scenario of seven days of saturation, so five days of um, anaerobic conditions, we can take that 120 units of nitrate times the 4% in five days, and we've lost roughly 24 units of nitrogen. So we just went through a couple of examples, and these are very cut and dry, and they're also very theoretical, where we know that out in the real world, there's a lot of other variables that we're dealing with. So we're dealing with variability in rainfall across the county. We're dealing in variability in soil types, drainage, topography, and there's not going to be a whole lot of scenarios unless you actually have flood ground and you got flooded. There's no, not a whole lot of scenarios where this is going to be across every single acre of the field. These examples also don't take into account leaching, which is going to be extremely variable depending on the drainage that you have in your soil, right? Because if you have good drainage, you aren't going to have as much denitrification because we aren't keeping those soils saturated for as long but you're gonna have higher loss due to leaching. Now, again, the more nitrogen that we have in that nitrate form, the more we're gonna to lose to denitrification 
and leaching. But what these examples do is they give us an idea of, okay, how much, is it a lot of nitrogen lost or is it a little bit? And then the real question becomes, will I see a response? Or if I come in and increase my side dress rate, am I going to make money on that application? But here's what I would say is that it's definitely something that I would be considering. If I am somebody who puts on all of my anhydrous up front, early spring, no end serve, and let's say I'm only putting on 200 units in corn on corn, I'm definitely considering increasing or starting to put on some sort of additional nitrate or nitrogen over the top. If I am somebody who puts all of my nitrogen up front with UAN solution, I'm definitely thinking about increasing or putting out some additional nitrogen out there. If I'm somebody that's doing anhydrous ammonia, a little bit up front with NSERV in the spring, and then I'm coming in and I'm putting some on with the planter um, with UAN, and then I'm already planning a, you know, cidrus application later on in the season, and I'm already putting on adequate amounts of nitrogen, uh, that guy's gonna be less likely to see it because most of his plant nitrogen is still in the tank at this point. Um, and he has spread it out and you've already got ad adequate um, amounts of nitrogen. So the answer is going to be different for everybody. Um, this video wasn't intended to give you answers on whether you should do it or not, but hopefully it gave you some things to chew on. Maybe it freaked you out about having more nitrogen loss than you had anticipated, or maybe you made you say, hey, maybe I didn't lose as much as I thought. If you guys have any questions or you wanna chew through some of these scenarios, go ahead and give me a call, text, or email. Keep your stick on the ice, we're all in this together.